Welcome to Escapades of Life and Kitchen with me, Marisha, as your host. Hey, it's uh, Saturday, December 3rd. I'm back at the house after my escapades making red glitter clothespins. And now it's time to cook. So tonight I'm just going to, the protein I bought this week, I bought a steak. There's the steak. I bought a steak and uh, I also bought a pork chop for tomorrow. So what I'm going to make here is I'm going to take these beautiful vegetables and I'm going to cut them down and I'm going to saute them all up. So I have like onions and peppers and fennel and cabbage to go with my steak and my uh, pork. And the only thing I'm going to do different with the pork to the saute is I'm going to add a beautiful, lovely, fresh a Granny Smith apple. Apples and pork. I just love that together. So that's the plan. Let me try and find that good, sweet position here. And we can get cooking. All right, let's see. How's that? Am I here? Yay! All right. So um, I, well, I went ahead and chopped my garlic already, got that all ready. Uh, I did that without you because I was actually doing the laundry and I cannot have the washer and dryer. I can't. No. So everything's done with the laundry and now I can talk to you. So um, I'm just going to let's see. You know I'm fond of all my little containers to prep my stuff into. So my garlic is ready. I'm just going to go ahead and, and bench scraper. This is a really great kitchen tool to always have around for moving and scraping and getting things from one place to another without. Uh, getting them all over your hands. So, that's the garlic. Um, I showed you what I'm using here. Red bell pepper, Fresno chili, a nice yellow onion, some fennel, and a little cabbage because it's yummy and delicious, and why not? So, I'm going to go ahead and not bore you with the cutting of all those vegetables because I really can't get you close enough to teach you like or recommended ways to cut so until I get a second camera, that's going to be it. But here we go. I got all my stuff. I'm ready to go. I'll turn you back on when we get stuff going into the pan. And I'm going to grill my steak on a cast iron. I have a cast iron grill pan that I love very much. And uh, I recommend also that uh, you have one of those as an essential item of your kitchen, cast iron. Um, the best place to buy it is at the hardware store and not at a cooking store. The hardware store in your neighborhood has a, a lots of great secrets when it comes to kitchen equipment. And I highly recommend shopping there for the best prices no matter what you need. All right, that's my tip for the moment. Uh, let me come back to you when I'm ready to cook. If I didn't mention it before, it's always good to take your meat out at least a half an hour before you, however you're going to prepare it because it's better when it comes to room temperature. When your meat is really cold and it hits the hot pan, just it isn't right. So always take your meat out, let it get to room temperature. All right, so I've put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. It is, uh, I think it's pretty good. We're going to throw first toss in our Fresno chili and some garlic. Oops. All right, I have to stand over here. Fresno chili and some garlic. And then I should also point out to you that I'm preheating my skillet in the oven to cook my steak on. So that's also really helpful. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, well, no wonder. Okay. Thought it was smelling a little gassy, and sure enough, flame wasn't on. I was also wondering why I wasn't hearing any sizzling going on. All right, well, never fear. Just because you're not sizzling doesn't mean anything. All right, there we go. Can you kind of see this? Here. 
Yeah, I guess not. I guess really you can't see this. I don't know. This is so difficult. All right, well, uh, this is not working out. This is just, I really need, I need help. If uh, anybody in Taos wants to help me, I'll feed you. Come over, help me shoot some of this stuff. But since I really don't have a lot of friends here, by choice, I might add. A couple of acquaintances, I would say zero friends, and maybe five acquaintances, none of whom really want to spend any time here, which is okay with me. I like myself just fine enough to be alone all the time, but having some assistance would really be helpful. Okay, well, since the fire wasn't on, it's taken a minute more than I thought to get my garlic and chilies going. There they go. I can hear them a little bit now. All right, and then next we're going to add in our... Next we're going to toss in our fennel. And just a couple minutes after this oil starts to get a little flavor from the chilies and the garlic. There. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. Alright, so you can see the pan. Ah, that's good. That's the sound you want to hear. Even if this has to happen, reverse. I typically like to warm up the pan, put a little oil in, let that get a little warm so that when the garlic and chili hit, you know, something happens. But this is good. This is going to flavor up. This is a good beginning for some good flavor. All right. I'll let that go like another minute. Don't want to brown that garlic. Just want to get it nice and golden. Nice and golden brown. Let's see. So, well, that might be... So you can probably start to tell that I eat pretty healthy all the time. Not pretty. Yeah. I eat a lot of protein and I eat a lot of vegetables. I don't eat hardly any fruit at, at all. Sometimes I have an apple. Like I said, I'm going to put some green apple into my... Um, into this saute to add for the pork tomorrow when I have the pork chop. Tonight I'm having steak. So we've got our chili. To this we're going to add our fennel. If you've never had fennel, I seriously suggest you do. It's yummy raw. It's yummy sauteed. It's yummy roasted. It's just a really, really delicious bulb vegetable. And I know some of you are often a little nervous when you see vegetables you're not familiar with. Don't be afraid of the fennel. You can see it cuts pretty much like an onion. Alright. So let's pour the rest of that in there. Together with our red bell peppers and our onion. And we're going to leave this all in here. Kind of cook down. Get all caramelly and yummy and delicious. And when this cooks down a little bit, then I'm going to add some cabbage. Yummy! I just think it'll be a nice little element of surprise in my saute of stuff to add to my steak and my pork chop. All right. So while that's going on, starting to cook down, you know what? I think I'm going to eat this piece. Um, one thing you don't ever want to forget to do is season your food. A little salt. Fresh pepper. If you don't have a pepper mill, they sell it at the store in a pepper mill. 
Really affordable and highly recommended. All right. You know what? I made some fresh chicken stock the other day. Then I'm going to add some in just for a little flavor. And that's another tip I can tell you. When you, I know many of you like to buy those uh, roasted chickens at the grocery store. And, you know, I can't stop you. But after you've um, eaten your chicken and you've got nothing left but bones, uh, put them in the freezer and save a couple of chickens worth of bones and whatever else, you know, scrap from the chicken. Freeze it, and then when you have a couple of chickens worth, that's the time to make your homemade chicken stock. Yep, you take those bones, you stick them in the freezer when you have enough, put them in a pot, and save your scraps too from like your veggies. It doesn't, you don't have to buy fresh carrots and stuff when you're going to make your, when you're going to make your food, if you, when you're going to make stock, I mean. When you're making stock, you can basically use, I'll just hold this. So glad I got a tripod. You can basically use whatever scraps you have from your vegetables and just throw them all into the pot and let them simmer for a while and then you'll have stock. Then you just strain it all off, put it in the freezer, and you have fresh chicken stock always ready to go. It's not processed. It doesn't have a bunch of MSG or salt in it. You're in control of what you put in your body. And it couldn't be easier. Like I said, roasted chicken, save everything. Make your chicken stock from that. All right, I'll turn this back on when I add the cabbage and I gotta stop looking at the monitor. Ashley, I'm gonna keep on going and I'm gonna get my steak ready. So let me show you. Really could it be easier. I typically just open it up with salt and pepper. A little olive oil. I've told you before, a squeeze bottle is the way to go. I love a squeeze bottle. It can really control your use and keep it to a minimum. A little salt, a little pepper, a little olive oil. That's it. That's all you really need for a really great steak. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get the preheated pan out of the oven and uh, stick it on the burner. Good and hot, so be sure not to forget to use your oven mittens. And actually, I'm going to turn on this other burner, move this over, and put my skillet. All right. So just move my saucepan over there. I've got a nice hot grill pan out of the oven onto the flame. We're going to take that seasoned side of the steak that we just did, so lovely, and we're going to just slap it down right on and wait till you hear the sizzle. Let's watch this. Okay, here we go. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear, oh goodness. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear the sound of that steak sizzling in your nice hot grill pan. Okay. Now the other secret I'm going to tell you about. You know how you always get those great grill marks when you go to the steakhouse? It took me a while to figure it out. But, basically, it's 10 and 2. If you put your steak down on the grill pan at 10 o'clock and let it start there and then rotate that piece of meat to 2 o'clock, let it grill a little bit more. You're, when you turn it over, you're going to be so impressed with your marks, you're not going to believe you did it. I remember the first time I did it, it was very exciting. But 10 and 2, that's the tip. Took me a while to figure that out. All right, so now that our steak is sizzling, we're going to go ahead and just season up the other side. A little olive oil, salt and pepper. And... We're good to go. I like to put a lot of pepper on my steak. I love like the whole steak au poivre thing. But as you know, I like pepper everywhere. 
I like everything with a little bit of a kick. All right, let's take a look at how our vegetables are doing because they're looking pretty good over here. I need a big commercial stove. I miss the heat of a commercial stove and the space. All right, these are cooking down nicely. They'll be nice and yummy. Steak is sizzling away. And I will uh, come back to you. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Did I get the big grill marks or did I not? Let's see. Yes, I did. Beautiful. Do you see those grill marks? Look at that. Just like you get at the steakhouse, right? Oh, let me get out of the light. There you go. Pretty good. So, isn't that looking yummy? So, I've taken the steak and turned it again from 2 to 10. And now I'm going to take it and put it back in the oven to finish. I like my steaks medium rare. You can always tell by the touch. I'll teach you that trick another time. But uh, I like my steaks medium rare. I'm going to stick this baby back in the oven. And uh, I have those beautiful cross tear marks on both sides of my steak. My veggies are coming together nice cooking down and we'll have those momentarily. So let's turn off that flame. Put this bad boy in the oven. Be ready in no time. I've added the cabbage to the pot. Just cooking that down and drying it out. It'll be All right, I just got the steak out of the oven. It looks glorious. I'm going to Take it out of here, put it on it. Look at those marks. Oh my god. I could work at the new steakhouse. Anyway, I'm going to get it out of the top pan, let it stop cooking, let it rest, and my veggies will be ready right as soon as my. So, when I said I was going to cook this mixture down until it was dry, basically what I mean is I'm going to cook all the liquid out of here, and it's almost there, and then they'll get a nice little brown and caramelized and look really, really beautiful. I hope you can. Yeah, all right, so the liquid's almost all gone, um, and then they'll get crunchy and caramelized and yummy and delicious for our steak and for tomorrow night pork chops with a little added sautéed Granny Smith tomorrow night. Well, all right, there's dinner. Don't tell me that doesn't look good. Yummy! How juicy that steak is. Those delicious sautéed vegetables. So healthy, and this is at least two or three meals, so... Let me tell you, when people tell me you can't cook at home, it's too expensive, that's crazy. This whole meal cost me, this whole meal, this big plate, about $14. So if I get two or three servings out of that, you do the math. For five bucks, for five bucks a serving, you could eat this, or you could go get a Subway sandwich. You'd be the ch And that, my friends, is a perfect bite of steak. See how it's just perfectly pink in the center? Perfectly cooked, medium rare. Wow. All right, I can't talk to you anymore because I, I, I gotta eat. Yo! Hey kids, this is what's for dinner tonight. This is that pork chop I was telling you about. And right underneath there, that's that fennel and cabbage and red peppers and chilies I cooked down the other night. But I added a little apple tonight. Look at that yummy, yummy pork chop. You can do this too.